On Louis Rukeyser, you summed up your uh, investment philosophy as buy everything and hold it forever. Do you, do you still subscribe to that uh, in, in light of what the market has been doing? Or would you unload some things now? No, I, I, my, my theory is not subject to the ups and downs, the uh, peregrinations of the stock, the unpredictable peregrinations of the stock market. Uh, it's painful to do, but I think the idea of owning the stock market is the best approach to equity investing, and perhaps I didn't make that thoroughly clear there. I have never felt uh, that equities should be the only portion of an investor's long-term program. I myself am about 50% stocks, 50% bonds, for example. I was brought up when I came into this business in 1951 with the Wellington Fund, which was and is and I hope always will be a conservative balanced fund. But I think the idea of buying and holding forever and not trying to make adjustments requires that you've gotten it right in the first place. That you can only, you can only hold tight if you've bought right, if you will. And that is to say have an asset allocation that has something to do with uh, how many years you have to accumulate money, how much resources you have at stake, uh, how much income you need and how much courage you have to ride out the peregrinations of the market. So you've got to take all that into account from that simple statement. You are the uh, godfather uh, of index funds aimed at the uh, uh, average investor. And uh, uh, this questioner points out that uh, actively managed funds have outperformed in indexed uh, over the last two years. Uh, is there a case then for uh, market timing? Uh, uh, what should you do when the index funds are losing money? Well, as uh, my friend Jim Glassman quoted me in his op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal yesterday, I a quote I don't even remember where I made, but it said, um, I don't know anybody who has ever been successful in uh, timing the market. I don't even know anybody who knows anybody who has ever been successful in timing the market. <laughs> uh, last year, these last two years, the, in, the index, uh, S&P index, has outperformed roughly half of the funds, a little bit less last year, just about half this year. I don't regard that as a significant long-term sign at all. Uh, first of all, the number of funds is not a relevant statistic. We use it because it's convenient. But if you've got a few little funds in there that do well, they count just as much as a few big funds. The reality is, no matter what the statistics tell you, indexing always wins. I say that because index is delivering the market return, and all those investors out there are by definition getting the market return themselves, less cost. So if statistics don't, don't capture that index advantage, it will be corrected in the next year or the next year. And by the way, if you look at the, even the last 15 years, counting those last two years, the index has outperformed about 75% of all active managers. Someone out there will want to take careful notes here because we're going to go from the general to the very specific. Uh, for the past 15 months, I've been investing $1,200 per month in Schwab mutual funds. Uh, he or she doesn't say which <laughs> Schwab funds. Should I continue or is there a better place for that money these days? <laughs> Well, f far be it for me to get into more, into more trouble with Mr. Schwab than I'm in already. Uh, but le leaving, leaving aside the, you know, the infinite variety of, of a stock of um, mutual funds that could be buying uh, through any kind of a mutual fund marketplace like uh, Charles Schwab's, uh, the, the answer is yes, continue to invest. I've told particularly young people in the office who are really uh, petrified by this market decline that it's the best thing that ever happens to him. And if you think about it logically, of course it's wonderful. I mean, think of, say, the young man I was talking to yesterday who's probably 25 or 26 years old, and he's got the rest of his life in invest. And I said, well, let's, let's suppose uh, that uh, Chris, uh, Chris Scott, his name is, I said, let's suppose, Chris, that the market's going to end up at Jim Glassman's 36000 by the time you retire. Do you want to be investing all your money with the, with the, uh, when the Dow is at uh, 35000 or invest it all when it's 9,000. Just think about that for a minute. Of course, you want a long time to invest at low prices. And it's a, a, certainly a frightening advantage for those of us who have some money at work in the market today to think of this as a blessing. But it is a blessing because in the long run, investing depends on accumulating money at sound prices and not inflated prices like we have. I also think the general economy and the financial markets are well served by a return to reality. When you leave reality and depart from the laws of gravity, uh, there's nothing but bad things that can happen. And the higher you fly, the more you fall. We flew quite high enough, and I think it's a blessing, maybe a blessing in heavy disguise, a blessing that we've come back a little bit toward the ground. Speaking of coming back toward the ground, uh, 
this investor's stocks are really down. Dr. Coop, just for feet. Is that Quigley Pharmaceuticals? Uh, Cisco, Lucent Technologies. Should I sell? Uh, I haven't heard a list like that. Um, he even makes those tech funds I told you about seem like heroes. Uh, I don't have any comment on those individual stocks. I mean, they, they are hugely depressed. I think Dr. Coop, I read the other day, is in danger, the stock is in danger of becoming delisted. I think it's sold up in the mid-30s, dollars and now is something like 19 cents. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a good turn. And uh, it's very painful for people, for speculators, or people that greed overwhelm their good judgment to get hurt, but uh, will they bounce back? I mean, I guess the answer to that group of, of stocks without knowing much about Quigley's Pharmaceutical and being very nervous about Dr. Coop is, you know, companies like Lucent will come back uh, in time. I don't think there's much question about that. But to own a handful of individual stocks, I don't think is sound investing. And to obviously jump on the bandwagon at a silly time is, uh, you know, I feel very, very sorry for the investor, but uh, I don't know how to help him now, him or her.